We need a self-sufficient law enforcement robot. How long will it take? We can go to prototype within 90 days. Where are you from? Metro South. Welcome to hell. All units, all units, check your nine. Better alive, you're coming with me. Hi, Paul, how are you doing, sir? I'm well, how are you? I'm, I'm good, thank you. Thanks very much for speaking to us. I'm Howard, and this is uh, Ashley. Howard, uh, nice, Paul, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you both. Thanks for having me. Thanks no, for thanks, asking. Thanks, Pleasure. Thank you very much. So, where, I mean, where are you guys right now? Ashley is in Plymouth in the UK, and I'm actually in Bilbao in the north of Spain. I'm originally from, from near Manchester, but I... Uh, oh, my I've goodness. Been... What time is it there now? You're a good eight hours difference or more, aren't you? Yeah, yeah it's uh, kids' bedtime now, yeah. <laughs> it's about <laughs> yeah, it's nine o'clock over here, yeah. Well, it's nice to meet you, fellas. Yep, no, it's nice, nice, to, nice to speak to you, and it's, it's nice to, uh, to, to get to speak to you about a film that I've wanted to speak to, uh, to you for the last 35 years. About. Good Lord, you're not even old, that old. How could you want to speak to me that long? Anyhow. <laughs> so, I mean, you must be, uh, you must be thrilled. I, I imagine you knew that it was getting released uh, in theatre. I know it's a limited release, but it's getting released in the UK, France, Australia, I think Germany and the US as well. I have to be honest with you, I did not know that it was until you uh, and your uh, request like, you know, informed me of such. I think that's really? great. I love that idea, awesome. and I love that it's coming out in a in a in, in the a high high def version. And is um is it um, is that right? It's a four K version for some reason. Four K, it's four K. Yeah. Di it's a director's cut. Four K. That's and right. And the director's yeah. cut. Yes, great. Yeah. That's great. That's great. I look uh -huh. forward to seeing that. I haven't seen Paul's Paul's version. I've not seen the version yet. No, uh -huh. have not. So talking of Paul, I mean, we, we spoke to uh, Nancy yesterday mm -hmm. uh, and I, we asked, I'm going to ask you the same question. There were so many directors that were offered this job before Paul took it on. Even, even he was kind of reticent to take it yes, on himself I, until his wife I was, I know that, yeah. kind of twisted his arm, no? So because there was, it was, it was all these kind of these directors that had, had shunned it, they didn't want anything to do with it. Um, what was it about the script that you thought this was something that you wanted to take on. And why do you think that it has, it's kind of lived 35 years and it's been, it's proved so popular 35 years later, despite what everything, everything that people thought about it before it was actually made. It's interesting. I don't know what people saw or didn't see in it when they read the script. I mean, you know, I was a young actor at the time and I read it and I, I thought it was really smart. I just liked the script. I thought it was smart. And and kind of cool. And if I'm unless I'm confusing my eras, which I might have, other than sort of Terminator, there weren't. It, it was still early in this kind of genre of film, or not not early. There have always been films like this, but there wasn't the explosion that happened uh, sort of thereafter about this 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 sort of genre. I guess I would say of film. Correct me if I'm wrong. And. Um, I just thought it was good, and mostly I just thought it was smart at the time, uh, and, and and clever. And um, you know, I'd met Paul, and I knew his work, and I thought he was he was terrific. So, I was excited to be a part of it. Uh -huh. Ashley, I don't know why I don't know why so many directors sort of looked at it and said no, no way. And and you know, but the other thing is honestly, Paul had a really um, Paul's a really bright guy. And, and a good director. And I think he had a very specific take on it. And I think he wanted it to be um, as much social commentary as it was sort of graphic action film. And I think he succeeded in, uh, in making it that, that, particularly at the time. And the other reason I think it probably has had some life is because, you know, it's, 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 it's got a lot of humor in it. It's obviously graphic for better and worse. Um, but um, there's also a kitsch aspect to it because the uh, sort of stop action kind of stuff, it's just before all the really uh, sophisticated CG that we have now that is just beyond the beyonds when uh, in terms of, I mean, you can literally create anything you want now. Um, and I imagine, I mean, you should talk to other fans, obviously, or maybe you have, but I imagine, I'm interested in why you think, actually, it's had such staying power and, and has such great affection for uh, at least a strong cult of people. Um, I think it's probably because of uh, the combination of all those things. Definitely. But what no, do you I, think? I, I mean, what is that? I mean, you know, again, I don't know if you either of you were born when it came out. What, what, uh, oh, yeah. what, no, 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 what, yeah, what, I was, what I was, you about was, it? I was saying I was 13 when when it was just it was the talk of the the, the schoolyard. It was like, have you seen Robocop? Have you seen Robocop? But I, I don't know. I think it just it, it, it's because of the social. It's because of the social commentary. I think a lot of films in that era were kind of 
they were I think they were scared and maybe maybe that was why maybe that was why some of the directors weren't weren't so right. uh, afraid to make of, of, of taking it on because they were concerned about maybe the backlash that it might create or something like that right. I don't know maybe yeah because it was it was quite different um from an, anything that was coming out of that type um at, at the time and yeah. uh it it's very smart but it's got um wide appeal you know you've got the smart satire you know there's there's laugh out loud moments um there's the the violence for you know to to keep the hardcore sort of fans in, engaged and there's sure. there's thrills there's kind of uh you know that kind of emotional wrench as well you know yeah. with murphy's story and and, yep. and and you know the loss of his family yep. and there's a whole smorgasbord of, of themes going on yeah. and it, it just pulls in together to form this wonderful kind of uh, heart that that sort of still attracts fans um today we were talking to to, to nancy and I, yeah. I went and saw it in 4k um at the end of last week and mm -hmm. it was like seeing it almost for the first time again oh really it, how it great was a, it was a tremendous experience and the age range of people as well it wasn't just you know people like me that that kind of have been in love with it since we you know it came out originally sure we had you know young teens and people in their 20s right through to kind of much older so great it, it still it's still um doing exceptionally well and it's wonderful from you know your point of view and our point of view that it's still pulling in those those new viewers and those new fans and that that i think is is the key to it really that's fantastic. Um, because I'm thrilled to hear that. And I, I hope it does well in the limited release that it has. I wish they would bring it over here. Uh, I don't know that there are any plans. Maybe you know, because again, yeah, I, I think didn't... in the it's, I was looking today, I think it's the Alamo cinemas are releasing it over there. I, th I don't know oh, if it's fantastic. Released, but I think I think the Alamo and then certain limited theaters are releasing as well. But I know that Alamo, Alamo are releasing it all across the, U the US. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Uh -huh. I'll have to uh, have my kids go to see it. The kids. <laughs> I've not seen it yet. I've no, they, have seen it. No, they have seen it. They have seen it, but not on a big screen. So uh -huh. yeah. I see. Now that you mentioned that, um, Ashley, and we've got uh, Paul here. How did Paul's moment go down in, on the big screen? Because that's kind of one of the kind of moments now in the film. I, I imagine that got a big uproar now. You're asking Ashley. me, or you're asking Ashley? A Ashley, Ashley. When he got, you know, the, the that that scene, I think we're allowed to, yes, to spoil yes, the film out, now. Right? The toxic waste. You, are you Absolutely. talking about my demise, my character? Yeah, your demise. demise. I'm, I'm just wondering how how that went down on the big screen the other day. Yeah, uh, it it went down really really well. There were there were people that were repulsed and giggling at exactly the same time. I think Paul um, Verhoeven would have been thrilled to hear that. That's I think exactly what he was going for. Yeah, it it's a brilliant moment. Um, and, and that actually ties into something that um, we we actually wanted to talk about, actually. Is it true that um, Ray Wise hadn't seen you in that makeup before <laughs> it was shot? Uh, that was something that we read, you know, because obviously his expression and, and reaction is is brilliant. Well, you know, I don't know which take they used, but yeah, I, I'm not, I, I don't, honestly, I don't recall that. If that was in print, I believe it. If Ray said it, I absolutely believe it. Um, the, it may have been that the very first take, he hadn't seen the makeup before uh, I came um, uh, stumbling over to him. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, it's a, that just, day, those, those two days are a bit of a blur to me because uh, putting on that body, that brilliantly designed uh, by Rob Bottin, body makeup, was um, a, the first day a six and a half hour process just getting that thing on uh, and then four hours to take it off, not including shooting. So uh, I was more <laughs> sort of just trying to stay in as uh, meditative a, a state as I could for the hours of that getting on. I think um, you had it had the easier job um, between you and and Peter Weller because we understand it. You know, oh, it took Lord. something like 10, 11 hours to get him into that suit and, and uh, that, maybe you know, that was, first day, I you know it got it got much less. Uh, uh, I think as time went on, they figured it out. But yeah, I know that that suit was um, again brilliantly designed. But I think it was you know they, had to, they were building it as they went, had to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, talk, talking of the uh, of all the, this prosthetics that I had to put onto you, that yeah. was I believe that they wanted to cut that out to release it in theaters, but Orion was having nothing of it. 
because they thought because they, I think they'd showed it to preview audiences and that was they got a huge applause or screams I, and shouts and, and no, they I, didn't I do want to remember yeah I, I think there was uh, there was uh, yeah they had some real issues with that you know the uh, the yeah the, the the censorship board as I would call it yeah had some um, had some real challenges around that scene but in the end they won so that's good I'm not sure what compromises they had to make. But in the end, uh, they they were able to include my demise after all. I know, you know, I know that it would have been done with CG and would have been easier for me, if not for other people. But all the much better for it because otherwise we wouldn't have got to exactly like this one, for example. Exactly, I have uh, one of those figures myself, and I'm I'm going to have to sue someone because I don't think I was uh, paid for that. But anyway, yes, I, I'm looking over here. <laughs> one of those things, yes. A friend of mine actually sent it to me. Hold on a second. <laughs> really? Uh, yes, I have. The, 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 yes. That is awesome. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> but did, did they actually, was there ever an action figure of you pre toxic waste? Or was that the Apparently only one? Not. Apparently, no. it's only really, so I suppose you could say that's really an action figure of Rob Boutin's makeup, although it's not that good. A, 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 a yeah, the, the face isn't quite, yeah. No, not quite. No. You're gonna be a bad mother. I wanted to um, just pull back a little bit about something you said earlier, because you mentioned Terminator, and I know um, Verhoeven has, has, has credited um, Terminator. Um, as partially being the success of, of Robocop, mm. uh, behind Robocop, I should say. Um, was that something that you could feel on set? You know, was was he trying to emulate that or was it very much his, his own thing? Oh, no, Paul's too um, individual a director for that. He, uh, you know, not that, not that he's not influenced as anyone is by anything, but um, uh, no, uh, I, I, I certainly don't know. I mean, he could tell you if that was anything conscious, but... Um, I never got that sense that he was in any way trying to emulate or copy or even homage that at all. Um, Paul seemed to me at the time to have a very, very, very specific uh, idea about what he wanted to do. Uh, and it was uh, absolutely individually his own idea and vision. Um, uh, he was uh, uh, sometimes frustrated at the, um, let's say, lack of uh, grandiosity of some of the uh, explosive effects, which he kept pressing the uh, effects department on over and over again, I think much to their frustration and consternation, but he got what he wanted <laughs> because um, sort of exaggerated explosive effects is, was part of the statement that he was trying to make. It wasn't just for its own sake. He wanted it for, um, you know, to me, it seemed, and I think that's right, a certain commentary about the dehumanization of uh, of our society and uh, law enforcement and some other things um, that and corporate uh, the dehumanizing effect that corporations can have on society. I don't want to get too highfalutin about it. Paul should speak more directly to that, but that's certainly the take I got, which I thought was in the film, uh, in the script, and I thought Paul completely uh, ran, both ran with and enhanced uh, to the film's um, uh, betterment. I mean, talking of Paul, Nancy said that he, he, he if things didn't go his way. He he would lose his temper. That that's quite an, an, an understatement, I think. But um, uh, into, yeah, Paul, but no, Paul, but I, I, don't, I don't want I don't want to talk about Paul without kind of without him uh, here. Yeah, but, no, but no, what no. I wanted Paul, to ask you was there's no question. Paul, I never felt Paul to be anything but passionate about what he was trying to accomplish, and so that meant. Uh, sure, at times when he didn't get something, especially if it was a like, okay, we've got one shot at this kind of thing, uh, I'm sure that, and I, you know, that he would, um, he would vociferously express that. Um, but, you know, he was also, um, but, but I never felt it to be anything other than, I mean, there are plenty of people in the world and directors or people or ostensibly who, um, uh, who are just, well, they're just bastards and they're just they're, they're just terrible people to work with. That's not Paul. Paul was a oh, yeah. wonderful, passionate, really cared about what he was doing. 
And so, um, sure, he could get frustrated sometimes, but it was never, I never felt it or witnessed it to be in any way abusive or anything like that. Yeah. And in fact, one of the funniest stories, and I've told the story before, but I, I believe, but, um, or I know I have, I think it was 10 years ago when it's the 25th anniversary. Um, you know, when we did the big shootout scene on the street with the big gun and where we blow out the windows in the street and all that kind of stuff, we get ready to do it. And it's two o'clock in the morning in Dallas or whatever time it was. And right before we do the shot, um, you know, the AD is getting on a bullhorn to, there were some uh, civilians in a building across the street on the second floor watching. Uh, and he was saying, or maybe it was a balcony, maybe it was an exposed balcony. And he was on the bullhorn saying, get back. You're not safe there. Get back. And I'm in the middle of the street. And Ray Wise and Kurtwood Smith are literally standing on a against a brick wall that's adjacent to a window I'm about to blow out with this gun. And we're thinking, if they're not safe, what are we? Um, nonetheless, we've got 12 cameras rolling, however many it was, and uh, action, OK, boom. And I hit boom. And you know, Paul had been pressing the effects team the whole time for bigger, bigger, bigger. So um, I saw, when I pulled the trigger, a wall of flame coming at me. And um, it, uh, I instinctively turned away. And I, sure, from seeing the footage, the flame didn't hit me, but the heat wave came blowing past me. And I got pelted with all kinds of glass. Uh, it was safety glass or whatever it was, a breakaway. So it wasn't, I, but I got hit with all that stuff. I turn around and I look, and Kurtwood Smith's leather jacket is smoking because he'd been right there. And I go running wow. down the street, and everybody yells, cut, cut, cut. And then everybody gathers around because this was pretty friggin' big. Uh, you okay? You okay? Okay. And to Paul's credit, he said to, to me, and I'll do a terrible, um, probably insulting accent. Um, he said, you know, sometimes uh, I always think I, I don't ask an actor to do something I won't do myself. But this time, I think I don't do it. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> He was not just... Uh, he was not a lunatic, and he was not just a screaming, uh, angry guy. He was a passionate no. filmmaker, and I no, love but, him. I mean, the, but the reason that I ask you why, why I didn't want to ask, kind of talk about that, but I wanted to ask him, because he, he's kind of, he, he was very volatile, because he was so passionate about his work. Exactly. How, how, how uh, open was he to, to kind of letting you create your character, for example, because yours is a very oh. kind of out there person, oh, character in the was, film. How, how, was, how open was he? How much toing and froing was there between you and Paul to, to kind of create your character? Oh, completely open. I mean, look, I played an ancillary but fun character in the thing. And, you know, that that um, that beard style was something I showed up with on the day. And he said, oh, yeah, I like that's great. Great. And we we messed around with the fucks around with the hairstyle lot stuff. What little hair I had even then. And um, <laughs> and and just in terms of the look of the character and all that kind of stuff. And then in terms of what I was doing, he was great fun to work with because he was he was. He was an actor, I mean, he was a director who clearly understood uh, and understands camera and visionary uh, uh, visuals and, and is visionary in certain ways, and um, but also loves actors and so and can speak to actors and directors don't always fall in that category. Usually people who are highly visual are not necessarily the greatest with talking to actors or speaking in actors language or communicating, collaborating with an actor. He loved it and I loved working with him and I think I'd be surprised if there was any actor on the show who didn't. Uh, maybe there is, but I'd be I'd be shocked. Because oh, yeah, yeah. Nancy, Nancy, Nancy spoke the world of him yesterday. Yeah. Oh yeah, it wasn't just action and cut. He loved. He would talk about the scenes and what's working, what's not working. We'll play with this, try that, or give me free reign to play with things. He was great. It was a lot of fun. It was my one of my favorite acting experiences on film, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually, lovely. Lovely to hear. Yeah. Um, just saying about that that scene where you're in the street with you know all the explosions going off um that that scene led to kind of one of your iconic lines and i'm gonna yes, sir. um apologize for my terrible impression oh, I don't I like hear it. It. yes well done well done that'll be five dollars um, <laughs> so <laughs> do you ever uh have fans still coming up to you and uh, like quoting that line uh, um, oddly, I still do occasionally, yes. For very many years, that would happen. But yes, uh, I still uh, occasionally do. Yeah, yeah, it happens. Yeah, it seemed to have, um, it, it became a bit of a catchphrase for a little while in the, uh, in the culture. I have yeah, to credit, uh, I, I have to credit uh, the, uh, the, the boom operator when we were starting to uh, do that scene and we, we were playing around with it and he referenced something. I'm trying to remember the film he referenced. 
uh, where somebody did a reading of something and I hadn't seen the film. So this wasn't a direct ripoff. He just put, he dropped something in my head about that. And, um, you know, I kind of went with my gut on it and they picked the take that had that particular reading. So there you go. Uh, it, it, it was great, man. I, I'll be honest. It's something I still quote now. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the boy in me escapes um, quite frequently, as my wife can attest to. So we, we have to preserve <laughs> the boys in us, I think. We, we have it's to Robocop the, the thing that you're best remember for? Because, we, you know, we obviously have to remember that you've been in some other really high profile um, things over the years, you know, you were in ER, uh, and uh, quite famously, Howard and I were talking about it before uh, before we spoke to you. You were Jack Bauer's brother, yes, so in the same still... in the same season as two of your RoboCop co-stars, but you never exactly. shared scenes. That's right, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. No, um, you know, I I'm honestly recognized uh, still. I I spend most of my time now actually directing episodic television, but I'm still. I act occasionally when they let me, and I'm still honestly um, recognized for RoboCop. Bizarrely, I still get recognized sometimes for Fame, which I was a uh, you know 18 years old and had hair. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> I would say it's ER, RoboCop, and Fame are probably the things I'm most most commonly recognized for. But some people, uh, I did an episode of. Um, um, Oh, for Christ's sake, the show, um, the, the UFO show, David Duchovny. Um, oh, X-Files. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Jesus, my brain. Uh, anyway, <laughs> X-Files, uh, where I played a, um, a, a kind of a, a guy who basically regenerated parts. It was a, a very wild episode. There are people who rem remember me from that and seem to know me from nothing else. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. but, but no, RoboCop, I am still uh, recognized um, with some regularity for. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, you, I mean, you showed there, you, you had the, uh, the, the, the action figure and you mentioned this huge gun that you had. I mean, there must have been so many props lying around on RoboCop. Is there anything that you still have to this day that you, you took home with you? No, I don't. I wouldn't have. No, 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 no. Um, trying to think if there's anything from that show that I got. No, no, just a lot of really fantastic memories. I had a great time with that company of actors and uh, and with Paul and the and the crew they were great and it's been fun over the years especially now as directing I just recently about a, um, a year and a half ago worked with uh, a guy who was my stunt uh, one of the stunt men that worked on that who is now a stunt coordinator uh, and uh, and we got to work together again uh, 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 on something else in different roles. It was really fun. So yeah, it's a, it's a community of people I'm really proud to have been involved with. And particularly, actually, you know, Rob Bottin's designs uh, on that show, I thought were, were just fantastic. I think Paul was happy with them. I hope he was. Um, but uh, Rob was a, a true artist. Uh, well, I shouldn't say was, is, but uh, I don't yeah, know. Because I, you know, I think he, he kind of just, I think he kind of left uh, <clears throat> this, the, the, the business, or at least for a while. I'm not sure if he's mm -hmm. still doing things or not. I mean, just just went back then. I think he just come, recently came off the thing. I think the thing was the thing, the film that he'd, he'd done just previously to that. No, I think that that's correct. And he did some work on the. Uh, 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 um, oh, Tom Cruise as a satyr. I can't remember the the name of the film. Um, uh, I know which one you mean. Yeah, but I yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the not Willows. No, maybe. No. Uh, anyway, no. Yeah, Tim Curry's in it as well. Yeah, what's it called? Legend. Yes. Legend. Yeah. Uh, yes, something like yes, yes. something like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have to look it up on IMDb. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. Uh, I just remember walking in his shop to get the face mask, uh, you know, the mold of my face done, and it was just so filled with all kinds of fantastic, uh, crazy, insane creations and creatures and puppets and masks. He was. It's it a lot of fun. Uh -huh. And yeah, and you mentioned that you you still got lots of memories, good memories. Um, I was reading, I don't know if this is true, this is off IM, IMDB trivia as always, but um, apparently when you were doing some of the more monotonous waiting around <clears throat> at the steel mill, uh, it, from two people that I mentioned is Ray Wise and Kurt Woods, Kurt Woods Smith, they used to steal the, uh, the golf carts, the cruise golf carts and uh, race around in those. Were those. Did you get to those kind of antics while you were waiting around? No, you know, honestly, none of it was, you know, uh, that... 
it was it was quite a bit more boring than um, than than um, if, if somebody has made it sound like it was a really wild and crazy uh, set and and actors were going nuts as a way of sort of promoting it wasn't an exciting that's bullshit it was pretty yeah. staid and pretty simple we had a lot of fun we had a lot, we joked around a lot and that kind of stuff and yeah we had a little bit of golf cart races but nothing uh, <laughs> nothing too extreme sure we didn't actually <laughs> explode anything did um. Did you uh, watch uh, either of the sequels at all? Um, and and if so, what uh, what did you uh, what did you make of that? When we spoke to Nancy yesterday, she was uh, uh, pretty scathing um, and uh, and frank about it. Well, I don't want to. I'm not going. I'm not going to be scathing about it. I saw one of the or part of honestly only part of one of the sequels, and I thought that um, they just lacked the. Um, I thought it was almost all the sort of uh, action exploitation, like like sensational aspects of, um, of of the piece, and lacked any of the sort of social commentary or satire or that kind of stuff. It seemed to be re very reductive uh, that way, and um, you know, didn't you know? Some people love those films, and that's great. Uh, but it didn't, for me, have they, they didn't have anything like the complexity that you were just uh, describing so well a few minutes ago. They were pretty simplistic, just sort of like you know, blow them up, bang them up, shoot them up kind of kind of movies. And and I thought it really was kind of cashing in on the original film. But as many sequels do, I mean, it's very hard to make a sequel of something that's really good. You know, The Godfather did it brilliantly. Um, the Coppola, you know. I bow down to, uh, but um, uh, and the, obviously the Star Wars franchise and some others have done it really, really, really well. But by and large, it's really hard to say, OK, how do we make anything like as good a second film? But it did feel to me like nobody was trying to be smart about it in terms of smart in the ways that we were just describing that first film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I mean, that's the extent of which I, and, and I hadn't seen the, I don't know how many of them they made, but um, I, I only recall seeing part of what I think was the second one. And uh, yeah. I, it wasn't yeah. as exciting. No, no, Nancy was, she was uh, quite miffed because she said that there was actually originally a, a, a screenplay for the, the second film that she really thought would do well. And you then might, for some reason that, it just uh, disappeared. Wasn't the same team, so yeah. you know. Yeah. Sure. I mean, had anyway, Paul well, done it, and, uh, and if, if it had been the same director and, and producing and uh, principals, I I suspect it would have been uh, better. And yeah. writers, yeah. But well, brilliant, listen, Paul. I don't want to keep you uh, any longer. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's my sincere on, pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys. Congratulations on thirty-five years of success. That is still. Uh, Going back to the cinemas and winning new fans every day. And uh, I hope to speak to you uh, sometime soon, either about another project or about the 40th, 50th, 60th <laughs> celebration. I, I hope so. And, um, and uh, thank you again, even for bringing this to my attention. I, I actually didn't. I wasn't aware of this, uh, this version coming out. And I'm thrilled uh, to know about it. And I really look forward to seeing it. So there we are. Yeah, uh, and I hope I you, you and your kids enjoy it together. <laughs> yeah, my kids. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank well you so now. much. All the very best. Take you care. Thanks very much for your time. Cheers now. Bye now. Take care. Bye bye. Looking for me? Your move, creep. Robocop. Thank you for your cooperation. Good night.